All right, guys, go ahead and All get right. started. Just one thing real quick before we get started. Uh, uh, Des Kids. Hey, d -Led. Des Kids. Hey, I was just going to say something quick, d -Led. Okay. Just update you guys. Des Kitchens, who's our running back coach, is uh, taking the offensive coordinator job at the University of Virginia, and we're happy for Des. It's a great opportunity. Go be a coordinator. And so he will uh, assume that position uh, immediately. And we will uh, obviously finish the season in the running back room by committee. So we got a lot of good coaches here that can help. With that, D-Led. I tweet that out, Coach. Hold on. We got breaking news here. I don't know if that's going to be breaking, but. Yeah, uh, I, I'll tweet it out. Rostin will probably beat me. Tweet okay. it out. <laughs> fight over who gets it first here. Yeah. Um, well, let me go to my questions. You threw me a curveball. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a couple of seconds if you need to okay. finish typing. Yeah. Um, just, Coach, uh, can you discuss the juggling job the staff did to get ready for this game? And, uh. You know, you had 66 uh, snaps by the practice squatters. Uh, and, and I imagine you and your staff went through great lengths to get ready for this game. Yeah, it's part of the, you know, job description of a professional coach. And uh, those were what the circumstances were. And so we, we had to adapt. We had to adapt in game. There was a lot of moving parts going on in the middle of the game. Um, and guys stepped up. We, you know, We've got a lot of production from guys that weren't necessarily with us in camp. The guys have been on our practice squad. They've had to step up. So we obviously came up short, um, but I appreciate those guys and, and the staff and getting the guys ready to go. And as, as far as uh, Coach Kitchen's going, what will that committee look like um, with, uh, you know, what, Ledford? We're going to Ledford's works with some backs, I guess, too, at one point. How would that committee – uh, look for you. We got plenty of coaches here. I, I can I can step in. Dave Ragone, uh, T.J. Yates, Led. We can we can we'll get this thing done for this week, and then uh, we'll, I'll take uh, take some time and um, be thorough about you know anybody else, any uh, body we bring in here on the staff. So it won't be immediate. We know uh, rush of judgment there. Okay. And, and just a little bit more on Parker Hesse. Uh, mm -hmm. What did y'all see during the draft process uh, to, to make y'all think he can move from defensive end to, you know, tight end? It's been a three-year process, I guess. Yeah. Um, no, it was uh, Todd Downing, who's now the coordinator in Tennessee, was our tight end coach who went out to the uh, pro day with uh, Hawkinson and uh, Fant. Fant. And as he was, you know, willing to work out, he was a team captain in Iowa, de uh, defensive end. And then we got post draft, and a lot of times when you know sometimes it's hard to fill fill that spot, especially when you've got a lot of production in that room and coming back. A lot of guys, you know, you may not sign them as undrafted free agents. And we took a flyer on Parker. Uh, Todd liked him, said, "Hey, look, this guy's willing to uh, come in here and try." And I, I believe he had a he was in a rookie camp, and then I think he was going somewhere else to try out as a defensive guy, and we had him try out as tight end, and he hung around. With a lot of guys on IR, he took a ton of reps that spring in 19. Hung around on P squad, kind of went up and up and down. And when they um, they let him go on Tennessee, he was a guy I was familiar with that uh, wanted to get a shot here. Thanks, Coach. Mm -hmm. Michael. Hi, Arthur. How are you? Uh, better question. How are you doing? Uh, I'm all right. I'm getting better. You know. This this thing's coming. This thing's coming for everybody. It feels like so. Yeah. Oh, uh, you know, definitely is. Hanging in, watching TV broadcasts apparently instead. Uh, <laughs> uh, what I, I know, you talked a little bit about it yesterday or, or didn't, but what did the officials tell you about the Matt Ryan that Matt Ryan slide slash play? What were you What were you told about that and and the calls slash not calls? Yeah, I'm not going to get into the officiating thing with the way they ruled it. Uh, I'd imagine they. They uh, clarified that on the TV broadcast, Michael. Um, you know, it's not the only time it's happened this season, but you know, that's something that uh, that was an emphasis by the competition committee. But that's the way they ruled it, so that's what happened. And the um, cause and effect from that to where you're at after that being in a, in a third and long situation. Uh, as far as Kyle goes, any? Update or clarity on 
on what's going on with him there and, and whether you expect him. I'm not going to get a lot of clarity. We'll have to see how the week goes. Um, so, I mean, we're not ruling him out today. This may be a weird question, but the, the fact that he's close to setting or close to getting to Dick is Mark, does that play into it at all? This week, if he pushes for it and he comes to you and says, hey, listen, I, I want to make a run at it. Like, how, how do you weigh that in, in a last game scenario? Not come and do that. He's going uh, to come in and say, how, we help, help, how would he help us win? So, yeah, guys, it, uh, those things are nice. Uh, I don't, I don't, uh, not uh, disregarding those things, those stats. But the, the only stat that matters, can, can we go out there and, and beat the Saints? And so that's Kyle. That's why we like Kyle. Um, he's he's going to be as he's you know proven this year already. And I think I've said it multiple times. I think he's just scratching the surface, but he wants to help the team win. That's your goal as a football player and a football coach. How do you? We haven't. You know, this is your first year doing this. And how do you handle the last week of the year with guys? Do you start playing other guys? Maybe start to get them some reps some looks do you stick with it kind of just as is these different guys take different philosophies on this that's great our approach is to win the game every game we go out that's that's our job description and how, when you look at it i know you guys have one game left but how do you view what this team has accomplished this year and, and what this team has done um you know there's obviously you want to you want to play in the postseason. We came up short, um, but like I said, that's probably a better question for sometime next week or thereafter that, Mike. Appreciate it. Thanks, Arthur. Mm -hmm. Josh, this might follow up a little bit on that, but how much of what you do from here on out, and and the in terms of personnel, will be with an eye toward 2022 as you start to figure out what the roster is going to look like next season. We're playing to win this game, Josh. That's the best way I can do, describe it. There's so many things that happen, um, things that are in your control, out of your control. It changed so much from year to year. Uh, we obviously have a long-term vision, but short-term, the way it always is when we line up and play on Sunday. We're playing. We'll do whatever we have to do, play however we can to win that game. Deron Harmon mentioned yesterday about liking the way that some of the young players on this team approach the game. How have you tried to balance, or did you try to balance this year, the youth that you had to have by necessity with the cap concerns with enough veteran guys like Duran to, to counterbalance that? And, and will that formula always be the same, or does it change as you go through this process? It changes, but that certainly was the uh, our intention, why we brought Duran and Eric in here. I don't think there's any no secrets about it. Uh, I got a great appreciation for Teron Harmon, Eric Harris, and what they've meant to this football team. Uh, but Josh, you got to evaluate that. You know what are what are your circumstances, and you kind of when you you know you asked it, you kind of you know answered it. Um, it will change year to year. It's not just like hey, we did it for 21, we're gonna have to do it again for 22 or 23. Uh, you know, and and it, 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 your circumstances gonna be we're gonna be at a different spot. So. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Tori? Yeah, I, I think just kind of going back to what Michael was talking about, just preparing for the final week. I mean, do you feel like this team has kind of the wherewithal to honestly go into it self-motivated to where you don't really have to kind of lay it out and, and be like, hey, this is a big game, even though there's no playoff implications? I mean, do you feel as though this team kind of has that culture in place to be able to do that on their own? Yeah, if we don't, Tori, we got the wrong people. So I guess you find out about you find a lot of people uh, through adversity. I think that's uh, we found out a lot about this team throughout the year. I think you know we answered you know some of it. Um, you, know, you, you put yourself in certain holes as the season goes on. For the most part, we answered that. Um, like I said we came up short yesterday, but if if you've got a if to answer your question. We, we, we would think we had the wrong guys if we had to sit there and, and trick them and motivate them. That, that's that's absurd. That's no, nobody that we want here. Terry and I want here to play here. If we'd have an issue with that, then they won't be here. Cool. Thanks. That's it for me. Mm -hmm. 
David, any follow ups? Yeah, yeah. Um, Coach, just the, um, the uh, defense yesterday came on 4-3. Was that just part of what y'all felt y'all had to do? And then uh, uh, had Terrell, you know, uh, following Stefan. You know, it looked like y'all had to just, you know, it was a lot of, lot of things that we hadn't seen. Y'all had to just kind of do some stuff because of the situation, I believe. That's what you do when you're trying to win the game. So mm -hmm. thought that was best under the circumstances. I uh, thought that was best for you know this game plan, and uh, it was a nice job by 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 those guys executing that that package. AJ did a nice job matching for the most part, but uh, that'll always be our charge every week, Dylan. Mm -hmm. If you we'll, we'll always look to, to problem solve and find give us the best chance to go win a game. And uh, you know, a guy like Thurman comes in and plays 17 snaps that's uh you know uh somebody got him ready to play too i, I would imagine he y'all got him you know real late last week well thurman has been here hmm. thurman has been in our program i've been caught up caught up like last yeah week. but he, you know, he's been here and that's 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 real when you got a development program and you need everybody here and you get somebody in your program and uh he, he showed improvement every week and the circumstances i mean there was an opportunity there and same with Leonard, who was here, and y'all had to go go back and get him, and uh, he had to play. Looks like the three snaps on the kicks. Sure, and he would have been ready if uh, you know if he had to go in there and tackle. I mean, that's part of it, and we had him in our program, and then uh, you know certain things came up that week, and so he you know he bounced around. He was up in Minnesota's practice squad, but at least he had been here, and we felt confident if he had to play, at least he knew he would know what to do. Mm -hmm. And I uh, just. Uh, one question on the Saints here, uh, eight and eight, y'all could knock them out. Um, you know, it's a rivalry around here. So, uh, you know, folks will, you know, be looking at like a, you know, a real big, big game, even though you're not going to the playoffs. Uh, you know, how big would it be to knock off the Saints and, um, you know, and, and get to, uh, you know, eight wins for the season? Yeah, it's, a, it's about us and, you know, you know, we need to go out and win this game, d -Led. Um you know, division game, we got a I got a ton of respect for the Saints and what what they've done in their program for a long time. And and Sean Payton uh, said it the last time we played them. We understand, you know, any division game is huge. Uh, certainly this one being here in Atlanta, being another home game against a really quality opponent. And we, we need to go win this game. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, I've got a couple. Uh, first, when it comes to Dez, You've been an offensive coordinator in your past. What do you see from him that makes you believe that he'll be a good OC? He's a smart coach. Um, communicates well. Understands how to how to provide value uh, every week in terms of strategically, you know, coming up with with ideas, getting his guys ready to go. Uh, uh, there's a lot of things. Communicates well. So he's a, he's a good smart coach. He'll be missed around here, but it's a it's a heck of an opportunity for him. And uh, just at the end of the first half, it, there was maybe a little bit of you know time management. I guess the the clock went down again at, at points. Just what was the strategy and the thinking there toward the end? I believe it was with like a little under two minutes left. You talking about after AJ's interception? Yeah, we had our timeouts. They, we had the ball at midfield. We got in position to score. Not what we're supposed to do. Yeah, no, I, I guess I just meant like, is there was there a thought process maybe taking timeouts earlier there in that or no? I mean, you get down to you got most of your timeouts and down to thirty. Certainly, you don't want to take a sack there, but it, the, it's pretty obvious, Michael. I mean, they got the ball back after half. We need to score, and there's a fine line. You know, we're obviously trying to score a touchdown, and you know, you're playing that game there of not giving them the ball back too quick either with an explosive offense. So it's pretty obvious. Appreciate it. Thank you. Josh? I, I know you're fairly neutral about when it comes to analytics, whatever that means necessarily, but are there any statistics that you monitor internally that, that you think do show fairly progress or not as the season goes on? Yeah, we have a good analytic department. I think, um, you know, it's a, 
cottage industry that's popped up. I think it's a lot of very misunderstood from the outside. I think a lot of people on the, on the fringe, uh, you know, I'm going to make a dollar. I don't fault them for that. I don't think most people understand it. Um, it sounds smart to write about. It sounds smart to the user when something goes bad. Uh, we, but like I said, we have a, I'd argue, one of the better analytic departments uh, in pro sports. We put a lot of thought into it. And it's all about user application. But you're talking about splicing up stats and you know, coming in, this isn't baseball and basketball. So um, some of them are really good to look at. And you listen, and you learn. And then some of them are just, you know, you can, you can bunch things, bundle things together and try to create your own narrative. Um, so I, I don't know really what what you're asking there, Josh, other than get to the bottom of it. If you know you have a more direct question about it. I, when you get that stat sheet, the first time after a game, you get when you get that stat sheet, is there one place your eye goes, one or two places where your eye goes that you say that's a fair indication of how we played today and how we're playing through the season? I think it'd probably be the final score. The first place my my eyes would go, Josh. You got a, you got a place you start? No, I mean, some guys, you know, yards per carry, uh, time of possession, I don't know what it is. Everybody's different in terms of something no, that I they think. Either, but, I mean, the, the ultimate thing is the score. I think there are a lot of things, too. Uh, there's a lot of misleading stats. I think when you're um, – having a bad season and you're playing in a lot of down a lot of games and you're in a lot of two minute drives and you, you sit there and pat yourself on the back for some padded souped up passing stats. Great. Uh, you know, we want to be balanced. You know, the, the, there's some of the things that are pretty obviously situational that matter. Um, but that, that, the, the first stat I look at Josh, I look at the scoreboard. Tori. I'm good. Thank you. All right. Anything else? All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.